Hello YouTubers and fellow hams. Well, I had a comment uh, on my video for my quick and easy field antenna that I did a little while back. Somebody asked me about the antenna tuner that I was using in the video. And that is, well, the one that was with the antenna. And that was this. This is the, e the M-Tech, um, had it upside down, ZM-2 ATU. Now this is a Z-Match antenna tuner. That's a little different from a Pi Network or L Network tuner. Um, it's in a small box. It was a kit. It was a really easy kit build. It took me about half a Saturday to build a few years ago. And I've used it off and on in the field. Um, they have two options. Uh, one with uh, PL or SO239 connectors, and I got the one with the BNC connectors here for the antenna in and out. And then they've got a couple of binding posts for a wire antenna, a balanced feeder. Um, it has a built-in uh, tuning aid over here, a little LED, and I'll talk about that in a little more in depth. Um, makes it easy to, and quick to tune up. Uh, it has a switch here which adds additional capacitance to the first stage to increase its range for uh, certain antenna types. It, overall, it's a pretty versatile tuner. It's nice and small, could fit in a, in a backpack or a small case, easy to take in the field. It's rated uh, by the manufacturer at uh, 15 watts maximum. Uh, it uses really small capacitors for the tuning capacitors, and uh, I think that's probably about the limit. Uh, I'd feel comfortable up to 10 watts for sure, and it certainly works well with many of the 5 watt uh, QRP radios that are out there. Um, the company claims that this will uh, tune up just about anything, and uh, indeed, Z-Match tuners do have a really broad range. They'll, they'll match up just about anything. Uh, you could throw a watt of wire out a window probably and tune it. I don't know how well it would radiate, but uh, it would probably tune it. So it's an interesting little tuner. Uh, very versatile. It's an easy kit to build. And uh, we're going to dig into it a little deeper. I've seen quite a few videos on YouTube about this tuner. Um, they're usually just quick little demos or overviews. I'm going to try to get a little deeper into it. And uh, another thing I want to look at is insertion loss. So uh, I have a, a plan for how to test uh, insertion loss with this and see how much power um, is actually getting out to the uh, wire antenna versus, say, an L-network tuner. I'll, I'll compare it to my L-network tuner with that test. So let's, uh, let's go over here to the computer, and uh, I'll uh, show you the manual and the schematic, and we'll talk a little bit about how this thing works. This is uh, MTech's website, and you can see here they have several versions of the tuner. They've got a UHF version. That's interesting. Um, you can buy the pre-built tuner where they build it for you for $87.50. Uh, or you can buy the kit for $62.50. And uh, it's, a, it's a pretty nice site. They get everything all together here. They've got lots of photos to help you uh, with the construction, of what it should look like, how to build the different sections. and That's, that's nice. I really like having these photographs of the uh, wiring, how they want it how they want it to look, you know, and uh, you can double check your work as you're building it. It's great. Um, nice detail. So that's their website. Um, let's go look at the manual. The manual that comes with it is a PDF. Well, I've got a PDF of it here. It's printed and uh, it's a pretty nice manual. It uh, takes you through winding the toroids, and uh, yeah, that's a bit intimidating, but it's actually pretty easy to do when you follow through the steps. They, they lay it out for you really nice, you know, give you photographs and detailed instructions, full parts list. Uh, it's, a, it's a pretty decent manual. It, uh, it walks you through the construction if you buy the kit, and uh, works out great. There's the schematic. We'll get back to that. Comes with these little uh, tuner caps. Uh, wiring diagrams and details as you work through building it. A full wiring diagram of the back side here. So uh, you, can, uh, you can get this tuner together in, in, a, in an afternoon. Um, some nice uh, detailed instructions. Now the schematic. Let's look at how this thing works. So this is the schematic of the tuner. We've got our input over here. Um, this is the tuning indicator, which we'll go into detail on that in a moment. Uh, the first section of the tuner here, we've got one of the tuning capacitors right there, and then a two-way switch. Now you can see um, in the middle position, this is disconnected, this is disconnected down here, and the only thing when the switch is in the middle position that's connected is one half of that first tuning capacitor. One position of the switch 
here will engage the second half of the tuning capacitor. Uh, the other position of the switch will engage this 500 picofarad fixed cap. And then this section up here will do your tuning. So that's how you can add capacitance to the first stage of the tuner. The second stage of the tuner, back here, we've got a transformer, right? Here's the output to our antenna, and uh, you can see uh, you've got your, your uh, regular output there to ground. Um, if you wanted to use a balanced feeder out here, you'd flip this switch in, which grounds this side of the transformer, and then that uh, provides your output for there for the wire antenna. Now it's kind of an interesting arrangement here. We've got our second tuning capacitor here. Okay, One half of it, this half, is coming across part of the transformer there. The other half of the tuning capacitor comes up to this part of the transformer down to this point. So we've really got kind of a, an interesting arrangement going on here. Um, this is almost a Pi network by itself that's tapped with our input feeder. So that's the, the way the Z-Match tuner works, and that's, that's kind of interesting. I wonder about insertion loss um, with this tuner. Uh, an L-Network tuner just has a capacitor at one end and a, an inductor straight across. You've got a fairly straight electrical path through to the antenna. Um, DC coupled, well, there's, there'll be a capacitor. No, it'll be DC coupled. Um, here we've got a transformer, and you know, anytime you put components in a circuit, they're not 100% efficient. You have a little bit of loss, and so I kind of wonder on this tuner how much power is being eaten in this tank circuit and how much of it's actually coupling across to your antenna. The Z-Match will match just about anything. Um, you can have just radically bad impedances out here on your output, uh, and, and it'll match it. But how much of your power is being chewed up in this section of the circuit. So I'm going to do a test with that uh, a little bit later here in the video and compare it to, to an L-Network tuner. I've got an idea for how to test that, uh, that efficiency. But let's look over here at the, tu at the uh, tuning indicator here, okay? This is the little uh, um, circuit they give you to help you tune it. And what you've got here, okay, when you flip this switch into tune mode, they switch in a 50 ohm resistor here that uh, drops some of the power, so you're not overloading the LEDs down here. Um, and then you've basically got uh, an H bridge here, and this is, is really just a, an, a reverse um, power indicator, so it's going to measure reflected power coming back from the tuner. They've got a, uh, one diode here, drops the voltage slightly, and then you've got your LED here. So what happens is, as you're tuning the tuner and your reflected power drops, this LED gets dimmer. So what you want to do when you flip this into tune is you want to tune your capacitors here and here to get that LED to go out. When that LED goes out, um, you'll be at the lowest reflected power or the lo uh, lowest SWR, standing wave ratio, which is a ratio between forward and reflected power. So that's really kind of clever. Um, this resistor will start to heat up because it is eating some of that power, so you don't want to leave it in tune mode. Um, after you've got it tuned, you'll flip that tune switch back to operate, and uh, then, the, then your uh, signal comes straight through and into the uh, tuner. So that's how the Z-Match tuner is uh, laid out and how it works. Um, it's, a, it's a kind of a wacky tuner, <laughs> but it works pretty well. So, let's go down to the bench. I'll open mine up and I'll show you what the guts look like. And then we're going to set up a little test and we're going to compare its efficiency, uh, show you how to tune with it, and compare its efficiency to an L-Network tuner. So, let's open this guy up. There's nothing in the box. Everything is built onto the back of this panel. Now the uh, toroid is about uh, oh, a little over an inch wide or so. It's pretty big and the wiring layout is pretty logical. And you can see the two tuning capacitors here. They're uh, a little bit bigger than what you'd find in your regular old transistor radio. Little uh, plates have mica insulators in between them. 
This section over here is the, get my pointer. This section over here is the SWR indicator. You got your, uh, your 50 ohm antenna here that gets switched in. Voltage drop and then the uh, diodes, little pickup, little H bridges right there, small toroid, and the LED with a little diode in between. So it's all just point to point wiring, pretty easy to lay out. Not very much involved in it, as I said. So that's what the, uh, the actual guts of the tuner looks like. On the front, um, here's our switches, the tune and operate switch that we talked about, the adding capacitance where you switch in the second half of this gain capacitor or the 500 picofarad cap. And over here is the ground switch which grounds this post if you're using a balanced feeder. Um, the other thing is if you're going to use just a random wire connected here, because you could just take an end-fed wire right to this tuner, you'd also want to switch this in to ground this side, otherwise it won't tune. So the controls are pretty easy. Tuning methodology is pretty straightforward. Um, first you'd listen on your receiver, and you'd start these at about half, right? And then you'll tune this section until you hear a noise peak on the receiver, and then you'll tune this section until you hear a noise peak on the receiver, and then you're close. Then with this in the tune position, you'll throw out a carrier. Um, with like the 817, you'd want to drop your power down to half a watt or so. You know, you don't want to push your finals. You definitely don't want to tune with your uh, radio at full power because if you're way out of tune, you're going to hurt the finals. So you drop your power down, you throw out a carrier, and then you'd turn these until you see that LED dim back and forth and back and forth between these two until you find the point where that LED goes out. And what I would usually do is if, if it went out, I would go a little further till it started to come on so I'd get a feel for the range where the LED is, is on, off, and on, and then tune that to the middle of that range, and then I know that I'm tuned. So that's how it works. Uh, I'm going to put this back together, and I'm going to go set up uh, the radio and an antenna and a field strength meter, and we're going to compare... Uh, radiation from the antenna with this tuner and with my L network tuner and we're going to see if there is indeed any insertion loss from this network as I suspect there might be but we'll find out. I, I don't know that this is going to be the most efficient tuner so that's why I want to find out but it's definitely the most versatile. Okay on to the test. Three, two, one. Okay guys so here's the test setup. I have a 15 foot vertical that's uh, <clears throat> just a regular wire antenna. Got a, You can't see it in the grass, but there's a counterpoise that runs off across the yard there, 15 feet. Sorry for the wind noise. Uh, over here, I have my field strength meter set up. I'm going to have one camera on the meter so you can see the radiated strength from the antenna. And the pickup on the uh, field strength is parallel to the antenna. Uh, i got the main camera over here that's going to be pointing down here at the uh, radio and the tuners. We'll get that going here in a second, and we will uh, get started with the real recording and the test. I'm going to test the, I'll show you how to tune the Z-match, and we're going to see what the field strength is from the antenna. And then I'm going to switch over to my l network tuner, and uh, we're going to do the test again and see if the field strength is greater or weaker. So we'll determine if we have any insertion loss with the Z-Match versus the L-Network tuners. So that's the setup. All ready to go. I'll get the camera started and we'll get this test underway. All right, guys. Here we go with our test. Now, I have presently the Z-Match tuner hooked up. Uh, I'm on 20 meters, found a quiet frequency. There's not much going on anyway. So what we're going to do is we're going to tune for 20 meters. Now I'm going to have to, uh, this is going to be tricky, <laughs> try to do this with uh, one hand here and the other hand on the key, but, okay, I think you can see that LED's coming on. All right, what I'm going to do first is I'm going to tune for a peak in the noise. Right about there, the noise came way up. Oh, and that LED is just barely lighting up, so I'm going to tune. 
gets brighter, gets dimmer, right there, okay. And right there it's out. And looking over at the field strength meter, I see that's deflecting to up to about 72 or so on that scale. Uh, and that's with one watt coming out of the antenna. So that's, that's pretty much how easy it is to tune this tuner. You, you tune for that noise peak, you throw out a carrier. Oh, if I did that, I'll probably even get more on the field strength meter. Okay, I have to adjust the meter now. <laughs> We're pegging it. Almost there, a little bit more. Well, okay, we can work with that. We know that we are just shy of full scale with the uh, Z-Match tuner. And you saw how easy it was to tune that tuner. Now, I am gonna switch to my L-Network tuner as quickly as possible here. Let's see here, uh, antenna. All right, we're tuned, and it looks like we're just shy of full scale again. So that answers that question. The uh, Z-Match tuner does not have insertion loss. I always wondered that, and now we know. So there you go. That's how it works. And now we've done our test. Back inside. Well, so there you go. That is the uh, ZM2 tuner from MTech, and uh, now I know for sure, and uh, some of you probably already knew, that uh, the Z-Match tuner does not have any insertion loss. It's just as efficient as uh, an L-Network tuner, a little more versatile, a little bit broader range of, range of match. Um, so hey, that's a great little QRP tuner if you want to have, uh, have one to carry out to the uh, mountaintop with you for uh, whatever radio you've got. Um, I'd go with this guy. And uh, having a built-in uh, um, way to just hook a wire right to it, you know, just use it for an in-fed wire directly is kind of cool. Put the counterpoise on this side and you're good to go. Toss a wire in a tree, hook it up to your radio, and uh, get on the air. So, I uh, hope you found that helpful, and uh, 73. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Also, if you're not already a subscriber, click to subscribe. Join us on the Facebook channel for discussion about the videos. And if you'd like to help support this channel, please click to support me on my Patreon page.